We have some beautiful poupees in the um, auction as, and then the page turns. Um, and they're wearing wonderful costumes and fashions, which is of course what our catalog is all about, the changing fashions in the world. But we, there's also changing fashions in how uh, the poupees were made and what their style represented. And I have dolls here that come from the early 1860 period up to 1875 period. Well, that's only 15 years, but still, it's a spread of time in which the doll market changed. Now, as doll people, you tend to walk in, look at a doll, and the first thing you look at is the face. And justifiably so, because there were so many beautiful faces made. However, when you're trying to identify a French poupée, it, very often you have to remember that many of the faces were generic. There were porcelain makers that would make them, th then doll makers, the doll makers would buy the heads from the porcelain makers, put them on their bodies, their wigs, their costumes, and market them as the sh with the shop's name or would sell them to shops as a completed doll. It was very much of almost piecework type of thing. So when we're trying to identify our early poupées, always kind of pe people, keep that in mind because people will constantly call me and say, well, Florence, who made this doll? And I said, there's no way to know who made that particular doll. We can only know that it's in the style of dolls that was presented by, say, Maison Simone or something like that. But the actual doll maker, very, very difficult to know most of the time, with exceptions. And one of the exceptions were the dolls by Leontine Romer. Leontine Romer was started to make dolls about the same time that Adelaide Hooray did with the wonderful Hooray poupée we just had. In fact, about the same time, and so many of them so closely resembling the Hooray, <clears throat> that there was a major lawsuit between the two companies. Um, but that's a different story. We just prefer to look at the dolls. The particular thing about uh, Romer, they um, registered many, um, not many, but some brevetés for systems of their dolls. There was one for how the doll would sit with pull strings coming out of her torso that hooked onto the knee of the doll so the doll would hold its seated position. And there was the turning of the head system, which look how far I, I can't turn the head any further. I can't turn the head any further. The 45 degree pivot, that was a system that she deposed so we didn't have one of these all around swirling heads in the mystical sort of way. She wanted her dolls to be realistic. Um, and because of that, there, it's a very particular neck cut. As you know, it's not a socket, it's not a light bulb neck socket that fits into the shoulder plate, but it's a flat cut. So that is one of the signs of this early Leontine Romer. Her chubby little face, I just love her. Wonderful features when you're looking at your fashion dolls to help determine their value or their level of rarity are features like the bisque arms, particularly the bisque arms that go all the way above the elbow because that made the possibility of many, many different kinds of costumes they could be wearing. So this is a very beautiful doll by Leontine Romer that is being offered in this presentation on May 15th, beautiful. Next to her, and this was about 1860, 1865, next to her is another doll that was deposed in 1865, and this is a very, very special doll. Um, this is the doll, um, the system of the doll, the actual presentation of the doll was made by uh, Mr. Rochard, Monsieur Rochard, and Rochard was not a doll maker, Richard was very fascinated with the whole concept of miniature photography, very, very miniature photography that could be placed in all sorts of secret places like jewelry or furniture or any of this type of thing. And so this is, he deposed a system for registering his Stanhope, his Stanhope um, jewels in dolls. And what we have here is a beautiful doll with her enamel eyes. She has a painted necklace and you see the painted gold and then you see the jewel right in the center front chest encircled by the gold painting. And now I'm going to turn it around because you will find that hidden in that jewel is his miniature photography and he deposed the system for doing this. These dolls are extremely rare to find and I don't know if the camera can catch in there. He signed each one of them with his name in this big red lettering, and he designed the dolls with a cutout at the back shoulder plate so the light would come through so one could gaze into the jewel 
at the front and see this little hidden miniature surprise. The same system was used um, shortly thereafter in making the little miniature opera glasses for dolls that are only about this big and when you hold them up to your eyes and just squint in them you can see scenes of Paris or other important things. It was a wonderful invention that he did. It had again nothing to do with dolls except that one of the ways in which he presented it was as a doll. One of the rarest dolls in, to ever find today, one of the rarest dolls. Um, the, probably the most spectacular example of this that we have ever seen and sold was is now today at the Berry Museum in Virginia. Very, very stunning piece. Now, I told you a minute ago that one of the things that you could judge on the value of a doll would be the bisque hands, especially to above the elbows. But what about if the doll also had bisque feet, which is a very, very luxurious factor? And what about if the rest of the body was not kid leather, but was wood, either wood painted or wood with kids stretched over it so tauntly that you, you couldn't even see the wood was there at all, which is what this doll has, a stunning, stunning early doll with bisque bare feet, bisque bare hands, wearing her antique lingerie over her kids stretched over wooden body, and because this is what you always look at first, a stunning, beautiful face. Let me turn her around. You can see her all the way around. One of the things I always look for in fashion dolls, and it's just, I mean, it's, it's subjective, but I love the dolls that have the brilliant cobalt blue eyes like she has. And as you can see, the other two dolls did as well, and I believe she does too. This is another very, very beautiful doll. Now watch her head, what I'm going to do. You see how most dolls will swivel their head. That's what they can do. They can turn from side to side. But what if the doll could also tilt her head? Or tilt her head to the other side? Or modestly lean her head forward? Or haughtily put her nose in the air? That was a great system that was devised by Auguste de Hors, and he patented or deposed this system because he wanted to have dolls that had more realism in their movements. So when you would pose them, they could be in one of these demure expressions. And so here we have a doll with a system um, deposed by Auguste de Hors and shown at the 1867 Paris exhibition. Uh, rare to find, and I'm just, I didn't even realize this before, but I have her here, I realize she's wearing, has a blue ribbon award. So other people have found her to be a very, very special doll as well. And again, cobalt blue eyes. Do you remember we talked about the um, Hooray Poupee? And the Hooray Poupee was wearing costumes that were like clothing, child, clothing of children, the mode enfantine. By 1870 to 1875, this had changed and the dolls were now wearing lady costumes. They were the fashionable ladies walking on the avenues of Paris or taking a stroll in the park with their children or shopping in the wonderful stores of Paris. And the dolls began to be costumed as these ladies were in lady costumes and all the latest fashions of their time. And here we have a wonderful example of a Jumeau poupee wearing her original costume of the season. And I'm going to turn it for you so you can see the back of the side and then the back of the costume. And notice the use of the burgundy, then with a solid burgundy velvet with a burgundy striped print, a shadow print, and brass buttons, and then the accent, curious little accent that you would probably never think of with these aqua silk ribbons. So an all original, wonderful costume in poupee. And finally, because I wanted to show how this fascination with the bare feet continued, and also the wish that the poupee could be articulated to be posed. Remember, the great majority of poupees were made with kid gusset jointed bodies, and they were rigid. You really couldn't make them sit. They were designed to be standing. Um, but when you had the wooden ones, they could sit. When you had the kid over wooden, they could sit. And then along came Monsieur Geslin, and he designed 
an articulated body that was a metal armature padded with stockinette. Not unlike, not unlike, again, because I like to do comparisons with other cultures, not unlike the Neapolitan dolls that were made almost 100 years earlier that were a wire armature with toe wrapping around them and that could be posed in infinite ways. And that's what this doll theoretically could, although um, like many of us that have certain years, um, creaks and joints make them not able to be moved quite as much as she probably originally could. But she does have beautiful bisque hands and watch, she can hold this pose now. And I was looking at before because I was curious and now I'm gonna put it over here so you can see. Let's just compare the modeling of the hands and the feet of a doll made in 1865 and then another doll made you know, 10 to 15 years later on. And there's the hands and there's the hands. Can you see that okay? All right. And then we can compare the bisque bare feet. Very beautiful modeling done in both cases. So a wonderful study. I think that as more and more people become sophisticated in their collecting of, of poupées, they've started to look not only at the faces, but at the bodies, the articulation, and the different type of um, purposes that doll makers were trying to achieve to make a realistic small model of a human being. We have some gorgeous, gorgeous French bebés in this auction that I want to share just a few of them with you of some of the ones that I really like. And front and center is to go with her big sister that was made um, 15 years earlier uh, is the, the Bebe Hooray, still introduced by the Hooray Company from their studios and from their shop and having an all wooden articulated Bebe body, not poupée, in which it is incised Hooray on the back torso. And she is here with her very, very splendid eyes. This is one of the rarest of the French bebés that you can find today. So keep looking at her. She's just beautiful. Now, other rarities that we have, we remember we showed you the AT and the H already. And these are some of their larger sisters. Here is the H done by Monsieur Halipo. And again, this doll very, very seldom ever appears on the market. And when it does, I, I will tell you candidly, because I've seen many of them over the years, they can vary in their level of beauty. If there's a scale of zero to 10 on a level of beauty and 10 is the peak of beauty, we have here a 10. This is a stunning, stunning doll. Beautiful eyes, everything about her is absolutely choice and wonderful. How about the Bebe Triste with an original Jumeau wig? original earrings, stunning, stunning costume of burgundy and lace and a hand-woven fabric, a stunning couturier costume on the doll and signed Jumeau shoes. This is a wonderful example. And on the far side is, but again, which you just can, you can't find these anymore. This is a very, very beautiful early Jumeau wearing her original couturier costume and I'm going to pull her hat off because this is what you will not see in the catalog or anywhere else. But I'm going to show you the interior of her bonnet with the original label from the Eau Non Bleu doll shop of Paris, which is where her costume came from. And if you have seen enough dolls with the Eau Non Bleu label on the costume, you come to recognize the style of costume that they did. This was a very, very typical uh, type of uh, lace and ruffled ribbon design that they put on their dolls. So sometimes when you find them that they are, when they are, do not have the label on them, you can say, in the manner of. And frankly, you're probably right. We have two others that I, or three others here that I wanted to show you. This is a great doll in her original Jumeau Couturier costume. This was originally from the Jumeau factory and a very, very unusual uh, doll from of the types that they produced. It's multi-layered. It has the cape. It has the dress coat. It has the tasseled cord tie, gold feather stitching, original matching hat. Let me show you the back. She's wearing her original blue Jumeau earrings a little Bebe pin. She's featured in, she's actually shown in the Jumeau book, 
uh, that I did with Francois Timir and check out her shoes. The desirable shoes that everyone wants to find. This is the wonderful doll. And I included this, I included two other models that are more from like the 1885, 1890 period, about eight years later than most of these dolls, but they had unusual features that I thought were important. Who do you think made her? Your first glass, glance is probably wrong, at least mine was, but she was made by Steiner. And what model of Steiner is she? You might be wrong here too. She's a figure A, much more highly painted and dramatic than most of the figure A's. And I'm gonna turn her around and show you the mark on the back of her head because this is very, very unusual. And that is the figure A written out in the red ink script. You do find that red ink script markings on um, Jules Steiner Bebe, but not on this figure A and not on this particular manner where the entire mark is written out. Very, very different and unusual Bebe to find. And then, in the interest of just the classic doll produced during the peak of their, the peak of the Jumeau period, um, this, the Tete Jumeau, this is a beautiful example with brown eyes. Don't just say, oh, I'd rather have an earlier model. Look at all of the Jumeaux because in every category there are exceptional examples and this brown eyed one is one. I also want you to look at her wig. This is, I love good wigs. Look at that wig. Hip length, extended length wig, original curls. Oh, it's just absolutely stunning. A beautiful doll in every way. These are just some of the wonderful French bebés at this auction coming up on May 15th.